Today's video is all about this very delicious vegetable soup. This vegetable soup is mostly for diasporans who do not have the luxury of finding pumpkin leaves and water leaves where they live. Even if you can find them, I bet you to try out this vegetable soup, it is worth trying out. You're going to love this. Maybe better than the other type, but don't let them hear me. But no joke, this vegetable soup is very good. Very rich, delicious and nutritious. So having said that, let me introduce you to the ingredients. To make this soup, you need cow skin. I have chopped them up into tiny bits because I wanted some obstacles in the soup. You will need palm oil, lots of palm oil because that is going to be the only liquid in this soup. For the proteins, I have goat meat or any one of your choice, but I find goat meat to be more flavorful for this soup. I also have cow tribe or shaki. I have washed this thoroughly with salt and hot water. You will need fresh pepper, seasoning cubes and some salt. I know I have a lot of seasoning cubes there, but I ended up using just two cubes and then I added one crushed one that I'll show you in a bit. You will need onion, red onion preferably and lots of that too. You will also need crayfish. I have washed this crayfish. You will need um, snail. You can skip this if you don't want it or call me to come and carry it. <laughs> you will need catfish and stockfish. So I've washed everything here. Now this is the crushed um, seasoning cube. I'm going to be adding the jumbo crayfish flavor stock. So that's what I'm going to be adding in addition to the extra two that I used from here. So and also there is no vegetable soup without vegetables. So these are the vegetables I'll be using for this soup. This one is called collard green. It is usually white like this. That's how you recognize it. And the stem is usually very tough. Even the leaves. I find the leaves to be tough as well. That's why I like to wash it like I'm washing bitter leaf before I cook with it. You can use the frozen one but because it's tough and it has a very strong taste. I don't like to buy frozen one. I like to wash it down first. The second vegetable I'm going to be using for this soup is called kale or cabbage leaf is among the cabbage and broccoli family so I'm going to be using this as well it's rough in texture and then I'm going to be using spinach I have nine bunch of spinach in here so these are all the vegetables I'll be using for this soup now let's get started let's start cooking enough of intro kowa. it's time to cook to begin I'm going to start cooking the meat that way while the meat is cooking you have time to prep and cut up the vegetables and in most cases by the time the meat is cooked I'm also done prepping the veggies so what I'm doing here is chopping up the onion I had three onions I'm going to use one to boil the meat the other two I'll chop it up and blend it together with the um, crayfish and fresh pepper I had that we're going to use for the soup itself when we start cooking so once that is done to a clean pot, add in the goat meat, the shaki, the chopped pomo, the stock fish and all of these have the same cooking time. That's why I'm adding them together. Now I'm going to add in two seasoning cubes, one tablespoon of the jumbo crayfish seasoning. I'll add in the chopped onion and add enough water for it to cook until it is about 80% cooked. So while this is cooking, this is the best time to prep and cut the veggies. This will also help you to save time because if you want to wait until you finish cutting everything, hunger will finish everybody in the house. So now I'm going to wash the spinach and I'm also going to be blanching the spinach. And that's because you know spinach contains a lot of water. So if you use it like this, your soup will be so watery. But if you want your vegetable soup to be a little bit more liquidy, I'll say you should blanch six of the spinach and use three just like that without blanching it just cut it in so once i'm done washing the veggies i'm just going to cut off that stem i know some people come and say why did i cut off the stem but yeah it just lit to now i didn't want to be seeing stem stem that was why i just cut it off so now i'm going to blanch the veggies i did this twice i did this in batches that's why you see me removing from the bowl and putting it back into the pot so at this point i'm going to now add in salt now the reason why I added salt to these veggies is that the salt will keep the vegetables green and will also season the vegetables. So after adding the salt, I'm going to pour in boiling water, very hot water, soak that in and after about two minutes, I'm going to now scoop it into a bowl of ice water so it can cool off there. And then you can see that the green became greener. It became kind of darker green. And that's because I added salt before blanching. So I'm going to continue with the rest of the process until everything is done. So 
So at this point, I'm going to squeeze out the spinach from the bowl of water and that's it. No more excess water in the spinach. I'll put it in a plate and continue until everything is done. Now I'm going to chop it up. Even though I have blanched it, I'll still chop it up. Because you still have the strands of spinach all squeezed in there. So I'm going to cut them up and I'll move over to the rest of the veggies. Next, I'm going to wash and cut up the kale. So yeah, this is what it looks like after chopping it up. I love the way it feels. I can touch this all day. So finally for the veggies, I'm going to now prepare the colored greens. I first of all take it off the stems. Like I said, the stem is very tough. I don't like to add it. So I'm going to do that and wash it very well with enough water. The last thing you want to fill in your vegetable soup is sand. So make sure you wash your vegetables thoroughly. Once it is properly washed, I'm going to now start washing it with warm water. Just like this, as if you are washing bitter leaf. I have tried this both ways. I have cooked this soup without washing the colored grain. And I have cooked it, washing it like this. And trust me, I prefer the outcome, washing the colored grain like this before using it to cook. The vegetable soup like i said this green have a very strong taste and it is also very tough so i like to wash it down you know to take away some of the power <laughs> before you need to cook the soup so yeah i'll do that chop it up and then set it aside So all the vegetables are ready. At this point, we're going to go and check on the meat. And yeah, look at it, it's almost cooked. So what I'm going to do next is take away the stock fish and shred it, debone it and shred it, and then put it back into the pot. So now I'm going to reintroduce it into the pot. I'll also add in the washed catfish at this point, the blended pepper, crayfish and onions. I almost forgot the snail at this point. So I'm now going to add in the snail, the palm oil, cover it and let it cook down for about 5 to 10 minutes until there is no more water left in the pot. The only thing you'll be seeing is the oil. I'll show you when it gets to that point. So this was 10 minutes later, I'm going to stir it around and at this point there's no water left in the pot. The only liquid you can see here is the palm oil. So now I'm going to start adding in the vegetables and I'm going to be starting with the collard green because that's the toughest one. I'll add that and let it cook down for about 2 minutes before I add in the rest of the vegetables. So after the initial two minutes, go ahead and add in the kale and the spinach. Cover it and let it cook for maybe three to five minutes. Five minutes may sound a lot, but it's not. You want to cook the veggies down until it is a little bit softer. So I cook this for five minutes and I'll show you what it looked like five minutes later. So 
So this was five minutes after cooking down the veggies. You can see it's still green. It wasn't overcooked at all. So at this point, I'm going to give you one last stir and it is ready guys. This soup was delicious. The aroma that filled my kitchen at this point was heavenly very delicious you can see how supple it looks it wasn't dry at all and that's it it's ready at this point scoop them into containers where you'll be saving them up in immediately that way it doesn't turn dark brown if you leave it in the pot it's going to turn dark brown and i learned this trick from anti-flo chinery here on youtube so guys we've come to the end of this video do not forget to subscribe if you're new here welcome my name is ungozi subscribe and hit the notification bell it's fun here and to my returning subscribers i love you guys Thank you so much for all your support and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.